Okay then, let's get going with this tutorial. So we've got Commodore Petsonite, it's one of the last Commodore systems I've got to do a setup on, like I said at the beginning of this emulation series, I aim to cover every computer, every console known to man, or every emulator known to man. So I've done Commodore 64, Commodore Plus 4, Commodore VIC-20, Amiga, uh, you name it I've done it, but Commodore Pet is one I've not done, so I'm going to get on with this. And we're going to download the emulator first, which is, of course, Vice. So Vice emulator, it covers all the 8-bit microcomputers by Commodore. But let me just tell you that Commodore Plus 4 doesn't work too well in it, which I've got another tutorial, and I'm using a dedicated emulator for Plus 4 machines. So 64-bit is the one we want, and it's the GTK3 version. If you're running a 32-bit processor, then download the 32-bit GTK3 version. So I'm going to just download this, and this is of course going to take us to SourceForge. So Commodore Pet, it was released in 1977, it was Commodore's first computer, and it was mainly business orientated uh, machine. So over the years we got homebrew people developing games for it, which are still doing to this day, and uh, different Commodore Pet models. Uh, some of them had tape decks built in to load in, say, programs for businesses, that type of thing. And they were extremely expensive, uh, given this was 1977 and it was a very new technology at that point. Okay, so once you extract that onto your desktop, the next thing we're going to want to do is check out some games. So I'm going to refer you to the best website for pet games, which is on itch.io. It's a great website, I recommend it. Uh, most games on there for Commodore Pet are free, in fact it looks like all of the games on Commodore Pet are free. And there's a couple of file extensions for Commodore Pet. It's mainly going to use .tap files. They're cassette files, but they're known as .taps, that's .tap. And we also got a lot of .prgs, which are program files. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to load up a cassette tape image using the Commodore Pet emulator through Vice. So for this, I'm going to use Tut Tut, and if I just download Tut Tut, it's also going to give us some instructions on here. Uh, of course, Commodore Pet didn't really, it wasn't designed to run games. So most of the keys on here are going to be used to control the games themselves, uh, such as left is going to be controlled by O or digit 4, and so on. So let's download Tut Tut. And you can support the developer by paying a minimum of $2 or you can just go to the take me to the downloads. So like I was just saying, you can either download .taps or .programs. There was a disk drive available for the Commodore Pet models eventually, but from what I've seen of things, most games are on .tap and .program. So let's download the .tap for now, and that's gonna generate the .tap file. So let's also just back out of here for now, and again, Minimize this. So next thing we want to do, let's get up and running with Commodore Pet. So open up your GTK3 folder and go into bin like we do with all the systems for Commodore using Vice. And if we just scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a lot of XE files. These are applications and each one of these represent a different 8-bit Commodore model. So in this case for Commodore Pet, we're going to need this one just here, which is xpet.exe. And should you get a little pop-up on your window protecting your PC, then just ignore that and run it anyway. It's a very safe file. I've been using this for a very long time. So here we go. This is your main boot up screen for Commodore Pet, and this is running basic 4.0. So let's actually get a game running. So as I said, we got our .tap file just here. And to load this, we're just gonna go to file, and once we're in file, we're just going to go to attach data set, number one image. And from here, we can go to desktop and just highlight tutup.tap. And I'm going to attach this and load. Now, once this is done, I'm going to just type in load and then enter. And it's asking us to press play on tape. So once it says press play on tape, all we're going to do is go back to file. And if we just go down to data set, number one controls, we can then press start and this is then going to be searching for the programs on the cassette tape you just put in and give this a little bit of time remember cassette games take a while to load up 
And there we go, so search and found Tut Tut, and again it's loading. Now, for those of you who just want to get into the gameplay straight away, if you go down to this option just here, or rather where it says 100% CPU, if you just left click on that and check warp, this will speed up the process. And as we can see, uh, tape number one there, it's running very quickly. So we're going through the loading process, uh, probably triple times the normal. And we can now undo warp speed. And I'm gonna type in run and enter. And there we go, this is our program. So to make this into full screen, all I'm gonna do is just double left click on the screen. And there we go. And just bear in mind that Commodore PET came with a monochrome screen built in, which was obviously green and black. It's a very old computer. So we need to learn how to play this game. Like I said, when you're downloading uh, PET games from itch.io, they all come with instructions, different keys on your keyboard do different things so I have honestly got no idea what this game is about I'm just here to uh, give you a setup guide like I said I'm a Commodore fan but Commodore Pet I've not had much experience with uh, because one they're too expensive and two even if I could afford one I'm not sure how I would get it transported to me given their size and these are monster machines so once we get into the gameplay that's entirely up to you to read instructions which keys do what there's other options on this vice pet emulator that we can mess around with so if we go to crt here we can adjust brightness that type of thing is normal using vice emulator uh, saturation can give us a brighter contrast of green uh, gamma would do the same sort of thing just make things brighter uh, tint is pretty cool as well so just mess around with those uh, mixer is also another thing that you might be considering doing if you're into the sounds of Commodore machines. So this will give us different frequencies and that type of thing, how to adjust sounds. And we can also save progress on Vice Pet. So if we just go to Snapshot and just go down to Quick Save Snapshot just here, that will save our progress. So if we go back to Snapshot, Quick Load Snapshot, that will take us back to a few seconds ago. So same load states are possible with Vice Pet Games. So now that we've got our cassette.tap running, I'm gonna show you another type of program file extension for Pet. So I'm gonna download Load Runner clone for this. And this is a PRG, this is a program game. So of course Load Runner is a really classic game. And should you get this if you're running Windows 11, these files are fine, they're off itch.io, it's a very trusted website. So we got our loadsrunner.program. I'm gonna close this website down now, we don't need this one anymore. And from here, I'm gonna just go back into the GTK3 folder and scroll back down to pet. So we have pet here. Now, another way you can load games on this emulator is just literally drag and drop. So let's try dragging and dropping this program. So drag it and drop it onto XPET. And there you go, so this one's an automatic loader. Uh, programs are pretty much like cartridge files, so instant loaders. So it's actually given us instructions on screen how to control this game, so uh, select key to move left. So it's actually letting me define. Oh, that's how was it? And I'll just quickly walk you through how to load discs should you come across a disc for uh, Commodore PET systems. So if we go to file, it's going to be the same process as you would for Commodore 64 on VISO. We just go to attach disc image and say you've got two discs for a game for the PET. Then we go to drive 8, which represents your first disk drive. And then you just find the location of, say, disk A, disk 1. And you just click it, you highlight it, and you have to go to attach. And then if you've got a second disk for a game, we just go back to attach disk image again. But next time, go to drive 9, which represents your second disk drive. Once that's on there, you're good to go. You can even type in the commands so it feels like the real thing, loading a real disk on a Commodore PET. 
And do you know what the best thing with Commodore Pet is? Personally, I quite like this monochrome screen. So let's try and do a little program. We're going to go 10. And you know what I'm going to do? Print. And comma. Just. Jamie. Comma. And I'm going to put a semicolon on the end of this. And then line 2 is going to be 20. And I'm going to type in run and press enter. Okay, so it looks like Commodore Pet don't understand this sort of basic language yet. So anyway, that's for you to play around with. So like I said at the beginning of the video, I've pretty much covered every Commodore system, every Commodore machine around. I think I've got one more to do. If I find out which one that is, I'll of course do a setup guide on it. So as always, check out my social media, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, I'm always updating things on there. And of course, if you hit notifications, that's going to get you videos as I upload them. And if you're a Commodore fan and you just come across me, you're going to love my channel. I love Commodore. So until next time, stay retro.